Hello and welcome to Bite Size Tech. I'm your host, Rogue, and today a word from our sponsor, Crypto.com, home of the Visa card that pays up to 8% in rewards and the app that pays you up to 14% annually on your crypto stake. Join more than 10 million users on the world's fastest growing crypto app as you trade with confidence on the world's fastest and most secure crypto exchange. Tech has more information and a special sign up offer at the end of this video. Eliminator comes in with a upgrade question. He wants to know. He's got dual monitors. He's got a 1080p 144 hertz, and then he's got a 50 inch 4K 60 hertz. His target is 4K 60. He has a 9700K, so eight cores, eight threads. He's got 32 gigs of DDR4 3200. He's got an RX 588 gig. He's got uh, just under two terabyte SSD and he's got six terabytes of hard drive storage. Should I get a new CPU or a new graphics card first? He doesn't tell us what games he's playing. He doesn't tell us what his budget is. So we're gonna have to take a little bit of a stab in the dark here. Here's the question. Oh yes, you had the question up. This is new. This is actually the first time we're doing that. Maybe we should do that for all the bite-sized texts. That's a really good idea you've got. Let us know in the comments below if you think all of these should have the question up on the screen like that. So, here's the deal. Yes, TLDR, you should upgrade your CPU and your GPU. A i7-9700K is an eight-core, eight-thread CPU. It's a good CPU, but it is, in fact, only eight threads. We've had eight-thread CPUs for 13 years now. Okay, it's eight true cores as opposed to four cores, eight threads. 4K, 60 frames per second, dual monitor. No, you own the wrong CPU for that. You can. If you wanna play GTA 5 at 4K, 60 frames per second, sure, okay. Fun fact. Your RX 580 will currently play GTA 5 at 4K 60 frames per second on your current hardware, so you don't need to upgrade. Rogue made a comment and said he didn't, Eliminators didn't say what games. I am going to assume AAA games from the past two years and going forward for the next two years anytime you guys ask these questions and do not specify. Here's why. Because if you want to play GTA 5 at 4K, that's a completely different answer to a question than if you want to play Assassin's Creed Bahala at 60 frames per second at 4K. So I have to make an assumption or a guess. Your RX 580 is completely inappropriate in most respects for 4K gaming. However, as I just said, GTA 5, it'll do it. But I don't think that's what you're asking about. But that's an old game. That is an old game. It'll play League of Legends. It'll play a variety. I mean, of course it will. But, you know, if you're asking the question, I'm assuming you're not playing 2013 games Well, and it's at also helpful if you guys tell us what your computer isn't doing that you wanted to do. Unless you just want to upgrade because you want to upgrade. Here's the reality. With modern 4K games with larger textures, larger world detail, and more going on, more cores and more threads will make a difference. The data required at 4K, and a lot of people are gonna say, but at 4K, you're just graphics card bound. Why wouldn't you just buy a RTX 3090 and be done with it or an RX 6900 XT? You don't need CPU at 4K. That's an objectively wrong statement. I have done enough benchmarking and testing at all the three resolutions to tell you that while yes, GPU bindness or GPU restrictions at 4K will limit the max total frame rate you can get. And certainly if you have a mid-level graphics card, you can bind yourself to the point to where no CPU in the world is gonna make a difference other than maybe making the game smoother. However, I don't think that's what you're asking about. And that's a very, very nice, mod a 60 inch, a 50 inch 4K, I mean, that's a TV. It is. Basically. Now, if he just wants to stay 1080p. Ryzen 9 or i9. Even though it's 4K, I'm telling you, you're going to wish you had it over the next two to three years. If you're wanting to keep this for a couple of years, if you're looking forward, not driving in the rear view mirror, if you're looking forward for the next few years and you want to have this be not just good today, but also be a good 4K gaming experience going forward, well, you can buy a 3090. 
you can buy a 6900 XT, but you might very well be buying the next gen in a year from now. If you're playing at 4K, to be honest, you need to buy the cards when they launch, not midway, because we are midway through their life. You are correct. And so the cards cost actually more today than they did when they launched, even if you'd paid scalpers in November or December off of eBay in 2020. Mm -hmm. They were cheaper back then than they are now. Yes, they were. Isn't that insane? Mm -hmm. Now he could wait, but he'll, you'll be waiting a year. It's October of 2021. 21. It'll probably be October of 2022 before they come out next year. You're kind of in a pickle. What do you think? Wait or just go ahead and buy one now and knowing you're just going to have to upgrade soon? Well, without knowing why he wants to upgrade, if he's got the money and it's not doing what he needs to, then upgrade. If it's if he can make compromises, then wait. I think if he had the money, he wouldn't be asking CPU or GPU. That's kind of what I'm thinking. You want to know what you need? You need a new computer. You need an entirely new computer because you have a motherboard upgrade in front of you. Yep. You've got CPU probably upgrade. RAM. You could keep your current RAM, video card upgrade. I mean, yeah, you could just change it. But, you know, if you change your motherboard, you're doing a whole system well, rebuild. Here's the problem. If you put a new GPU in there, then your CPU is a problem. And if you change out the CPU, then you're changing out the motherboard, the power supply, because if your power supply is it rated to the GPU that you're going to get. So if you go the CPU route, then it's highly likely that your whole system is not balanced for the new GPU, which we have talked about a gazillion times. Build an awesome balanced computer. Keep it for two, three, four, five years, depending upon your personal taste and budget and what you're aiming to get and then do it again. Yep. The average person who doesn't have a bunch of spare parts and who just wants easy in their life, all these little tiny minor constant upgrades, you just end up with a mishmash mess of a computer where it's unbalanced and- Well, what about just taking the 9700 out and putting in a 9900K? It's not worth the trouble at this point. If you're gonna do that, you should have done that long ago. You're going to spend a bunch of money to do it. You'll probably spend at least $150 to do it I guess you if you sell the current chip. a different chip. cooler, depending on... For a minor gain. It's sort of... The 9900K is a good CPU, well, but it's three years old. From eight cores, eight threads, to eight cores, 16 threads. Why bother? And they cost more today than they did 18 months ago. They were available for under $300. It's like, if you're going to do that, you, why why are we discussing this now? Why weren't we discussing this in... Well, if he'd just done the 9900K originally, then we wouldn't even be having this discussion. Do you hear me, folks? Stop buying i7s and buy i9s. There's very little point to the i7s, unless you're... The only case where the i7s make sense is if you get one of the non-K chips on a really good deal and you're building a relatively budget system around it. There have been some deals on the i7 10700 and 10700Fs for like 220, mm. that made sense. But beyond that, and of course those have hyper-threading. I never recommended the 9700K, it was always dumb. Correct. Eight threads in 2018 when it came out, I, it's just, it, no, no. So. Otherwise get a console and hook that sucker up and have some fun. How many times have I said the Ryzen 7 5800X was stupid? Just buy a Ryzen 9 5900X. For $100, okay, the street price today is different than at launch, but at launch it was 450 versus 550. For 100 bucks you get eight, you get four more real cores and eight more real threads. And at the time I remember when they launched, people were like, well you don't need 12 cores for gaming. It's 100 bucks, I could put that in my graphics card. No, last year when they when Zen 3 launched, you couldn't. 100 bucks didn't make a difference in graphics. Talk about leaping over dollars to pick up pennies. Don't do it. Actually, Talk about trying to do it and use our link in the video description below. Please. Thank you. And then do it again when you have to upgrade very quickly after. Exactly. Illuminators, thank you for asking the question, but the fact of the matter is you need a new computer. And there's already two two replies to that.
Okay. Wow, there's eight replies to my tweet. Cool, live tweeting and replies from audience over on the tweet book. Oh, there we go. Here, let me pull this up really quick. Remember this, this question? Yeah. I had a friend who insisted running a Pentium 4 when CPUs had reached quad core level years before. Oh, freaking Lord. You know what? Single core chips became really dumb really fast once the dual and quads came out. You know, with 2080 Ti and 1080p is no longer nuts. It is a bit crazy when it first came out, but uh, yesterday's premium top-end card becomes today's mid-range card becomes tomorrow's entry-level card. A 2080 Ti is a little bit slower than a 3070, and I think a 3070 is a really nice 1080p card. He said thank you for the info. You are very welcome. I'm not trying to pick on you, Eliminators, but get a new computer. Um, want to read that one? An online friend was having cooling issues on his late model Pentium 4, so he ripped off the cooler while it was still running to replace it. 30 seconds later, the CPU self-destructed into pieces and left a scorched hole in the motherboard. <laughs> that would have been before they had thermal shutdown. Um, that's like taking a radiator off an engine while the engine's running. I worked at a Best Buy. A guy came in looking for a 3080 from a 1080 Ti to stop stuttering on Warzone at 1080p paired with a 8700K. Yeah, people are getting their CPU and GPU confused. Because, because they're listening to, you only need six cores for gaming. Ugh. You know what? You do if you're playing games designed for those CPUs. Mm -hmm. Warzone ain't one of them. Nope. I mean, it will. It will run on a six-core chip. But the frame times are awful. Mm -hmm. You know what they're going to say? But I get over 100 frames per second. Okay, great. But are they smooth? That... Say it louder for the chuckleheads in the back. Are they smooth? Hang on. Are they smooth? That's a good analogy. 100 cores of three-day growth? Or a hundred... Uh... All I can think of is Riker and Data when um, Riker shaved his beard in Star Trek Insurrection. I know, I'm such a nerd. And uh, he goes, what do you think? And Data goes, can I feel? And Riker goes, smooth as, a, as an android's bottom. And Data goes... And he walks <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God... I want another Star Trek The Next Generation two-hour TV special with the OG cast, none of this new Voyager, Picard crap nonsense that the new piece idiots are making. You know what I want them to do for two hours? What? I want them to play poker and reminisce about the old times. I would pay to watch uh, Patrick Stewart, Will Riker, uh, Will Riker, sorry, uh, Jonathan Frakes, yeah. Um, Brent Spiner, etc., etc. Michael Dorn, sit around a table, play poker, and just yik yak about their various adventures. They had a you few. could make a whole freaking TV series of Star Trek playing poker, talking about the good old days. People my age and older would watch the ever. I would sign up to Paramount Plus in a heartbeat for that. There you go. This is not that hard. How cheap would that be to make? Not going to happen unless tech for president. <laughs> Give me something to watch. Anyway. Okay. And there's a bunch more comments which we won't read because we'd be here for a... There is. How many of you have a Visa card that pays you up to 8% on every purchase? Crypto.com offers an amazing deal on their Visa card with cash back that is an unbeatable deal. No annual fee, no sign-up fee, no credit checks, no interest payments. It works just like a prepaid debit card, allowing you to spend your money anywhere Visa is accepted. But wait, there's more. Get your Spotify, Netflix, and Amazon Prime subscriptions 100% paid for by Crypto.com. You heard me right. Use your new crypto Visa card to pay for your subscriptions and get 100% back in rewards.
Earning 8% on your new Visa card is awesome, but how would you like to earn up to 14% interest on your crypto holdings? If you're holding crypto for investment, inflation protection, or price speculation, it can be frustrating to feel like your money is just parked. Yes, you really can earn up to 14% annual interest on your crypto paid weekly directly to your account to spend however you like. The interest is paid in the same token that you're holding. So if you have Bitcoin staked, you are in Bitcoin. If you have Ethereum staked, you are in Ethereum, and so on. Flexible terms are offered, including zero lock, so you can withdraw your crypto anytime you like without restrictions, or you can hold for one or three month terms for a higher rate of return. Of course, you can buy, sell, and exchange 100 plus cryptocurrencies with 20 plus fiat currencies using bank transfers or your credit and debit card at true cost. Crypto.com is first and foremost a crypto exchange. There is so much more to explore, I have barely scratched the surface. DeFi features including a private wallet with full control of your private keys, margin and derivatives trading options for advanced traders, crypto credit allows you to borrow against your holdings with no deadlines or credit checks, crypto NFTs allows you to explore the new world of non-fungible tokens, crypto pay allows you to pay any merchant with crypto and you earn up to 10% back in rewards, and that's not even everything they have to offer. If you're looking for the place to be in crypto, use our link in the video description below to sign up today, you'll get a $25 crypto sign up bonus and 30 days of 0% transaction fees on credit and debit card purchases of crypto. It supports the channel and it gets you a great offer to get started in the world of crypto.